Hi, it's Rob from IBM here, and what I have for you today is a business rules demo featuring IBM Operational Decision Manager. It is a uh, retail demo that uh, gives you cash back for the items that you purchase at a given store. So we have Robomart here, and there's some and there's some items uh, for sale on the left-hand side. And as we drag them across to the right, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the price of that of that item, and then we're going to calculate the cash back that we get. Uh, for purchasing that item in the first place. And so here, when I, when I dragged a sander over, the, the cost came to $60, and our reward, or our cashback, uh, is $0.30. Cents. And if we change some conditions, then the amount of cashback that we get uh, increases or decreases. So for example, if we use our cashback credit card, which is our loyalty uh, uh, credit card, then we actually get a 10 times uh, multiplier on, on, uh, for our bonus points. And we can see that the cashback that comes back is $3 instead of $0.30. Cents. And if we change our loyalty level, then then, uh, then we actually, and our cash back actually increases. So what I want to show you now is how we do that with operational decision management. So here we have a, a simple rule flow. And what I'm doing in my rules engine is I'm first calculating my base amounts. Uh, and then I'm going to calculate some product rules. And then I'm going to have some brand rules and then some special rules. Um, uh, and then we'll calculate uh, what the best points are uh, for, for those particular sets of purchases. And so if I look at my base amounts here, um, and the first thing we're going to look at is our, our base percentage. And so what this does is this calculates our base percentage of, uh, of what the cash back we're going to get for every item that we purchase based on our loyalty level. So we have three loyalty levels, uh, and the percentage can change uh, based on the loyalty level. And the uh, next thing that we're going to uh, we have a rule here is for the... Uh, is for the credit card itself. So if the customer has a points credit card, then what we do is we add a 10 times multiplier to all the items of their shopping cart. And notice something else here as well. I have what's called a non-stacking multiplier calculation, and I have a stacking multiplier uh, calculation. And so what that allows me to do in, in my rules engine project is to be able to either combine or not combine uh, points depending on uh, depending on the rules. So, for example, if I if I have a ten per, a ten times points multiplier for using my uh, loyalty credit card, but I have an item that that offers a fifteen times multiplier, am I going to combine those? Am I going to stack them, or am I going to just pick the best one out of the two? And then my, my rules engine allows me to do that. And so very quickly, we we uh, we have this capability um, to uh, to do some fairly complex things with some very simple rules. So those are those are our base amounts that we're going to calculate. Now we're going to look at some product rules. So I click down here for the in the product rules bucket, uh, and then we're going to see that we have some bonus points based on based on SKUs uh, as well as multipliers. And in the bonus points table, what I'm saying is is that if you purchase a minimum amount uh, of either of these products, then I'm going to give you some cash back. Um, with that uh, with that purchase and for so instead of doing a multiplier what I have here in the demo is the capability of also just giving straight cash uh, as well as doing multipliers and the idea here is is to create another dimension in my uh, in my loyalty reward program because maybe sometimes I want to I want to have my multiplying system but I want to I want to put out some kind of promotion where I'm just giving cash uh, for buying certain types of items and, uh, and that's what we see here uh, and if I look at my other my uh, other product rules, these are multipliers. So if I'm using these two SKUs and a minimum quantity of two, then I'm going to have a, a 15 times multiplier or a 25 times multiplier. And again, and this one here, this is a, this is a stacking multiplier. And uh, so I'm going to come back here, and then so now we have our brand rules, which is kind of cool. And the brand rules have uh, have a uh, have an interesting aspect is that if I buy a, a minimum amount of a certain type of brand, um, then I'm going to give either cash back. Um, or do multipliers, and so we can see that here is, uh, and the idea there is that I can promote specific brands and just give out and just give out bonuses based on those specific brands, and I can incent customers to use those 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 brands. And for the quantity here, so so if I buy four uh, Pennzoil uh, branded products, I'm going to get a five dollar bonus, and if I buy three Robocraft products, I'm going to have a fifteen times bonus. So I can do either uh, in my decision tables. And then we get down to my, my favorite category, which is called special rules. And special rules, what it allows you to do is it allows you to insert special rules um, for doing specific one-offs, like uh, like a, a regional festival or some other type of thing where a store may want to participate in what's going on locally. And so you can see here I have several different um, rules to, uh, to handle so, just such a thing. If I click on that, and I can see that if the province of the location of the customer is BC and the city is Penticton, well, then add a 15 times multiplier for the Penticton Peach Festival. And this rule doesn't have it, but I could also put an effective date on any rule. So if I want to plan my events ahead of time uh, and then just put the effective date on it and then put them into the rules engine, then that'll 
then that'll kick in at that time. Uh, and then after the effective date is ended, then I can go at my leisure and remove that rule from my rule engine. So it's uh, so you know in a very simple rule flow, we're actually you know able to do a, a fairly uh, a fairly complex series of things. So. Let's go back to our rules engine now, uh, or back to our demo, and see what happens. So I've got the Robocraft sander, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another sander uh, in my shopping cart. And let's see what happens. So we get our, we, we have our our our, uh, our cashback credit card. We're silver, um, and we bought two things of SKU one 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 one, and so we're getting a dollar fifty uh, cashback. So in addition to our ten times card bonus, we're also getting a uh, dollar fifty. Uh, in, in just straight cash for buying these two sanders, uh, and that's part of, and that was uh, part of the rules. If we want to go and look and audit our rules, we can go to our decision warehouse and search our decisions. And so we can see we've already done some some decisioning here, and this is in our rule execution server console, and and it allows us to to uh, actually audit and track uh, the decisions that are being made. And if I look at this, I can see which rules have fired. And so the rules that fired here is that I've determined my base percentage. And I've had my uh, my loyalty credit card rule fired, and then here my bonus points based on SKU uh, table fired, uh, and and that's how I know that um, that I got that reward. So that's that's kind of neat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another uh, Robocraft item, and I go over here, and now we see that I have my 10 times card bonus. I've got my dollar fifty bonus back for the two Sanders, and now I've got my three Robocraft item 15 times bonus. So I'm, and this is the amount of cash back that I'm going to get. Now. Look what happens if I unselect the cashback. Um, I'm losing my 10 times bonus, but my cashback amount didn't change, and that's because the 15 times bonus and the 10 times bonus are stack are not stackable, and so it doesn't make a difference now. The rules engine picked the best points, but look what happens when I add a non uh, Robocraft item. I'm going to go here and I'm going to add the goalie mask, and I put that in there, and we can see that my cashback number has changed. And now, if I take that away, now the number goes down because I no longer am getting the 10 times bonus point uh, award for um, for the hockey mask uh, because because I, there's no other special promotion going on. So uh, when I when I select the cashback credit card, then I get the I get the 10 points, uh, 10 times points for the goalie mask um, in addition to the 15 times. Uh, points for doing the three Robocraft items. So I again, I can handle some very uh, some very complex uh, situations here. Now what I want to do is I want to add uh, I want to do some more. I want to have some more fun. And so uh, so I'm going to do is I'm going to take the I'm going to take the hockey mask away. And now I'm going to change my province and my city to Penticton because you remember I have the Penticton Peach Fest rule in. And I hit that. And now I see that the Penticton Peach Festival bonus is kicked in. But again, because I've already have the 15 times bonus for the uh, the Robocraft items. Um, then you know, then then the and they're not stackable. Then I can't. Uh, I'm not going to get any more uh, cash back. But now let's go into uh, operational decision manager into the business console and actually change uh, change that rule to uh, to give us more cash back. So I'm going to go. So I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go into my special rules, um, and then I'm going to go to my Penticton Peach Festival rule, and then I'm going to I'm going to edit it. So I'm going to edit the rule, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change. My 15 times multiplier to a 25 times multiplier, I'm like that. I'm going to like that. So this is a uh, so this is the Intel rule editor, uh, and what it allows us to do is use natural language syntax to actually make our rule changes. So if I'm uh, so this is especially geared for business people. I, I can go in as a, as a business user, and I can go in and change a rule uh, in a very easy to use fashion uh, without kicking off an IT project. So I can make my rule changes, you know, at the speed of business, uh, as it were, uh, as opposed to waiting for an IT project. And just to show off the the Intel rule um, uh, editor a bit more, uh, it has a, a type ahead feature, and it allows me to it allows me to change my rules uh, quite simply. So I can I can say if the province of the location of the customer, and then I can say if uh, and uh, let's see. The store, I think there's a store number variable. Yeah, the store number of a location of the customer uh, uh, is, you know, is a string. One, two, three, four, five. So I could add that rule if I wanted to, and it's uh, and it's very easy to do. And you can see that it, there's a look ahead feature to uh, be able to take in all my natural language uh, constructs uh, in order to build rules. And uh, so that's that's kind of cool. So I'm just going to take that one away because I'm just I just care about uh, being in BC uh, and being in Penticton. So I'm going to save that rule, and I'm going to create a new version. All right. So now that's in there. So now what I want to do is I want to deploy the the, the, the new rules to my rules engine. So I'm going to click main, 
All right, and then I'm going to go to my deployment section. I'm going to select my best points app, and then I'm going to deploy that. And I click on deploy. And so now, now the uh, the rules are being deployed uh, into into the rules engine. There's also an urban code uh, deploy uh, plugin available for ODM. So I could actually use uh, I could use urban code to deploy to any number of uh, any number of rule execution servers uh, that I want. So my, so uh, now my rules are deployed, and I'm going to go here. Now I'm going to go to Pentecton, and I'm going to hit it. And so now, see, now the 25 times points bonus is kicked in, uh, and that overrides the 15 times point bonus, and I have, uh, and my total is, uh, my total uh, cashback is now a, a higher number. So, uh, so anyway, so that is a, a quick tour of, uh, of operational decision management, and, um, and, uh, and uh, one thing I wanted to point out before we close out is that there is a governance process with uh, the decision center, and, uh, and so what you saw what you saw me just do and, and do very quickly um, is make a change to a rule and deploy it to my rule execution server. And that's great when I need to do that. But um, we need to have a governance mechanism that controls who and when rules can actually be changed. And so there is a uh, governance process that's uh, fully secured uh, and is, is, based on, uh, is based on releases. And we're going to save that for another video. So stay tuned and, uh, and we'll see a, a governance video uh, with, uh, with ODM and our, and our cashback uh, application uh, very soon. Thanks very much and have a great day.